Hey, everybody, and welcome back to episode nine of the Bits and Barbells podcast. I'm Baxate. I'm Ben. And today's episode, we are going to talk about how to glow up. And this will be a two-part series. So this episode will actually be our glow-ups, our stories, and everything surrounding that. Uh, If you are watching on YouTube, do not forget to subscribe, like, comment. It really helps us out with the algorithm. If you're watching, or if you're listening rather, on any podcast platform, please give us five stars. Um, But yeah, this is going to be a a two-part series, like I mentioned, and we're just going to talk about what we did to essentially glow up. So we're going to throw up photos of us um, from different age yeah. groups, but probably around like the 15, 16. I think that's when we're, my photo yeah. will at least be. We're going to throw a couple up there for you guys to enjoy. Yeah, because we both have had, um, you know, sort of radically different uh, looks maybe in our lives uh, for different reasons. But um, we are people now who sort of put a lot of effort into um different aspects of how we look um we but- identify as uh, metrosexuals for you guys out there <laughs> uh, men who are just concerned about their appearance you know? yeah but hopefully not in a narcissistic way at least uh it doesn't come across that way and we actually do go pretty far to differentiate ourselves from the looks maxing category um we might talk about that more in part two um so stay tuned for that uh but without further ado ben i just kind of want to hear your story about um, when you decided to start uh, caring more about your appearance and how you just started to go about that. Yeah. And so just briefly before we get into it for this episode, we don't really have a lot of structure planned. So it's just going to be us kind of free forming and going back and forth. Uh, So yeah, I can talk a little bit about my glow up story. I was always a very skinny kid, always had a very high metabolism. And I would say for the first like 14 years of my life, really, before like I got into high school, I was just super skinny. And I'm sure you guys saw it in the pictures. But yeah, I mean, basically, I was just this skinny kid, right? And I remember one time when I was like, maybe eight, and my dad like flexed his bicep for me. And I was like, what? Like, what is that? Right? Like this giant golf ball, like just popping out of his arm. I was like, holy cow, that's insane. And that was kind of like the catalyst for me. I was like, you know, Exercise was always a big thing in my family. Both my my dad and my mom and my sister even all were very exercise fanatics. So it was something that I just kind of grew up around, uh, just having that health mindset. And so it was something I carried forward. But being the kind of extremist personality that I am, I, I I was determined to take it to a different level. You know, I wanted to become like the the superman like i wanted to become the max possible version of myself and so that's kind of what i the the beginnings of my mindset during these formative years was kind of that was what was influencing it it was this the influences around me from my immediate family but also whatever extremist attitudes that i had towards life just manifested in my goals yeah i have a question about that before i talk about mine which is uh what do you think changed um, uh, at that time, though? Because in reality, uh, you being the extremist personality, it sounds like it was not something that changed overnight. You were probably always that person, but that was devoted now into something like going to the gym. Do you think it was like post puberty? You could actually build muscle, or um, like from school, you saw people uh, because again, your immediate family was with you all those years. What was like the specific time? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I didn't start lifting weights until like sophomore year of high school. And nowadays with all of the media influence and all the like fitness influencers that are out there, that might seem even a little bit late with everything going on. Because I think people are now recognizing the importance of this earlier and earlier. But back then, this was, I mean, how, when was this? This was like 2014, you know, back when I started high school. So that was a long time ago. I mean, that was almost 10 years ago now. Holy, you know, what the, you know, <laughs> I mean, wow, I didn't even think about that. But yeah, that was almost 10 years ago. But now things are a lot different. People are getting into it way, way earlier. But I, going back to the question, what changed for me was, yeah, I, I went through puberty and my dad and my parents always kept me from going to the gym in a sense because they're like, yeah, you're going through puberty. You don't want to go there, injure yourself mess with your growth plates or whatever. 
So it was like, okay, you know, whatever. The, 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 the drive for me internally wasn't that strong until it hit a point after I was basically done growing. I, I stopped growing basically in like seventh grade. So it was like, okay, I'm done growing. What can I do now? I started doing like push-ups or whatever, you know, just regular push-ups. And I was like an average skinny looking dude who just did push-ups. But really what changed the, the mentality for me was that, that like that formative influence of my dad, like flexing his bicep for me or whatever. That was like, whoa, like that was insane at the time. But then you just see examples of this as you grow up, right? I, I pointed to one example in a previous episode where I went to the summer camp and I remember my, she's going to hate me for this if she even listens to this. Okay. But anyways, there was this dude at the summer camp who was like jacked, right? And my sister was like, I feel like she was a little bit enamored with this guy. And so I was like, all right, that's it. You know, I got to do this. You know, I got to do this. Yeah. No, that's a, that's very interesting. I definitely have a little bit of a different story. And by the way, we're not just going to talk about um, going to the gym. Uh, it just so happens that that was part of the uh, sort of impulse for both of our glow ups. But also, I think that's one of the largest levers that particularly men can utilize to become more attractive. Um, so there will be a concern, like a bit of a concentration on that. Um, that being said, so for me, I was just uh, always kind of a very nerdy kid. Um, I was kind of awkward. I was tall, skinny, and, um, you know, just never really was like either great with girls. I had my very specific group of friends. And, um, so really up until I started lifting, it was, I was just kind of like, I'm just not the, I'm not the stud, you know, and I'm not the, the guy that girls are going to fawn over. And I'm not that I'm just the guy who's really good at school and who's nice and et cetera. And, uh, were you a nice guy? Uh, yeah, no, I definitely was, uh, probably a nice guy. I think that I, I definitely had some, um, embodied, uh, not, hatred, but maybe self-loathing, um, thinking, oh, you know, those guys, what do they have that I don't? Um, well, one of the things that I just started doing was lifting. And um, I won't lie that some of the motivation was to become more attractive. Um, but that sort of blossomed into a very real passion for working out, but then also allowed me to um, basically grow more into myself, if that makes sense. And so I became more confident. Uh, this took, this is over the process of years, right? Not months, years. Um, but I basically learned that I could become someone who was, this is going to sound weird, but like an object of desire, um, which previously I didn't see myself as capable of being able to do that. And so, um, that was like really cool and the kind of like liberating in a way. And so, uh, that, that was, you might be the only person on the planet who wants to be objectified. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, so here's the thing about that. Um, you, you make that joke. I would argue that most, uh, of our audience, if they're a men, no, they would say like, to some degree, men want to be objectified. Well, uh, I think, I think any desire, what it really comes down to is validation. You want to be validated in some sense. And so, building a physique it validates you not only just from women but also men like everybody respects that when you build something that's undeniable people respect it and we've talked about swole privilege before but yeah you know when you build something that is tangible and people see it it's their first impression of you it creates an impact it creates an impact and you feel that when you're talking with them and when you're just going about your life yeah so as i became uh bigger, I realized kind of like you were saying, some of the more um, popular kids, if you want to say that in high school, uh, began, and this is going to sound really shallow because popular kids tend to be shallow, but started like respecting me more, or I started getting invited to more stuff. And that's not the way that it should work, but that's the way that reality and society does function. And um, I realized, no, you know, I can still be myself, but these other opportunities are really nice to have. And um, I definitely probably went a a little bit too far down into the uh, gym side of things. Um, those first couple years, I think everybody goes through their meathead phase. But um, I also at that point realized, okay, this is uh, something that has had a market improvement on my life. Therefore, I'm going to also invest into other areas, which is now as we sort of <laughs> leave the, the gym, at least for me, that's when I also started focusing on stuff like okay, I've got a lot of acne. I'm going to go to the dermatologist because this is something I actually want to clear up. Really quick question before you get into that. What do you think, kind of the question you asked me, what do you think kind of spurred that motivation to 
get out of the, the, the gym frenzy phase where you're just obsessed with the gym, right? Um, yeah, I think that uh, I realized that I was teetering on the opposite side of things, which is if if going to the gym is actually making you a less likable person or less mm. attractive in the sense that either you're um, going through, I know that you might be able to talk about this in a second, like a really aggressive bulk or something, or are just, you make it your whole personality, oh which at God, one point, which at one point I did. And so I would like show up to class and like tank tops and stuff like that. Like, don't do that. That's weird. Um, and so, and had my, um, you know, supplements that I would take during class and stuff like that. Like uh, just obnoxious. That's just obnoxious. You're like drinking the protein shake, you know, like in class and people are just like, what, yeah, with your what, loud what the shaker hell is wrong cup. With you? Yeah. <laughs> I, Arnold has a story of that when he went to like community college in Santa Monica or whatever, he was like drinking protein shakes in class in like the 1970s. And it was just like such a non mainstream thing back then that people were just like, what is wrong with you? But even now I feel like it's a main, more mainstream thing is going to the gym and getting jacked. But back when we were doing this, it wasn't that mainstream. It was still kind of before the social media phase and all like the OGs of YouTube were really the main influencers on the scene, but it was still this niche thing. Yeah, but basically to, to answer your question, it was why did I start working out in the first place? It Part of it was to become more attractive to uh, the opposite sex, um, but also to like uh, just become more an attractive human being in general. So it, as soon as that stopped, um, I, Mm. basically helping then it was like okay no then that maybe i'm looking about this the wrong way which we'll probably go into the concept of gym cells uh in you yeah. know the in part two but um that was that was i was like no this is no i've sort of gotten the um point of diminishing returns now yeah. it's a passion thing now it's no longer like a i need to do this to become the most attractive self i can be yeah no i think i was literally about to when you were talking i was thinking you know oh so you hit the point of diminishing returns in the initial motivation. So whatever that was, in your case, it was like the becoming more attractive or gaining muscle. Once you hit the diminishing point return, then it's like, all right, this is not giving me the same value. Now, where, where can I improve from here? Yeah. Yeah. Because if you just think about it, like if I were twice as big as I am now, yeah. I wouldn't be more attractive and definitely You'd be less not. attractive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so. Uh, <laughs> You'd be more niche. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Exactly. Less mainstream appeal, more niche. Yeah. So more attractive to, if we want to dive into the psychology a little bit, like the bigger you get, the more muscle you accrue. Once you surpass like the, what is naturally occurred in like the human population, right? So if we, if we look at humans, they can gain a natural amount of muscle, right? Like within two standard deviations of the, the normal amount. Anything within that is generally considered to be like normal and attractive, right? There is mainstream appeal there. But once you start going beyond that threshold, and you start getting too jacked, that's when you actually start appealing to more of these niche, uh, whether, I mean, whatever, like women in this case, for us, it's like, then you start attracting the, the niche women who are only into like that bodybuilding kind of domain. And it, you're kind of limiting your options in a sense. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, do you want to talk more about like the, the bulking thing I mentioned? Because otherwise, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I kind of went through a similar thing where, so I mentioned I was a skinny kid, right? Very skinny. Then I started lifting and I was one of those guys who responded pretty quickly. I would say within six months, I looked a lot different. I would say there, I, there was actually this, I remember very distinctly when I started high school, there was this like picture of me that just existed out there. Uh, and some like somebody took a picture of me after school and like my collarbones were like a lot narrower. And then boom, like two years later, they're like, you know, the frame just came in and I looked a lot different. Right. And I was responding very well to the gym. And so that's when I made the decision in my head, like, Oh, I'm responding great to this. I hadn't hit the point of diminishing returns. I was like, let me milk this as much as possible. So then I was like, I'm going to bulk like crazy. And I started just shoving face. I was eating cottage cheese by like the tub every single day. And it was fine at first, right? I was gaining weight. I was looking at a scale and I was like, yeah, I'm gaining weight. This is amazing, right? As somebody who could never gain weight before, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm getting jacked. But in reality, what I was doing is I was just gaining a lot of fat and I was gaining a lot of water weight. And through the process of eating tons of cottage cheese and tons of dairy and tons of salt and all these things that I was eating, my diet wasn't the best. 
I was actually getting very bloated in my face and I developed like tons of acne. And so kind of similar situation, I was like, oh, like I need to stop this because it's actually counter, it's counterproductive now. And so then I went to the dermatologist, uh, you know, started getting on skincare. Eventually in, I mean, in college, freshman year, I actually hopped on Accutane. That really helped. I think, did you also do Accutane? I did not, no. Okay. Well, I did Accutane and it really helped clear me up that freshman year. But yeah, so that was kind of a similar thing. I, I really bulked hard. And actually, I did a second bulk freshman year, which was even more potent, I feel like, than the first one. But basically, um, so freshman year, first semester, I was just kind of chilling, whatever, just getting adjusted to the college environment. But then second semester, I was like, yeah, like, let's do this. Let's get bulked and just become massive, right? I was like, I'm in this environment. I'm by myself. I can be self-sufficient now. Let's do it. So I was like eating tubs of ice cream. Like this is part of my weekly routine. I would like eat like two tubs of ice cream at, at one point. I got up, so I'm 5'10", right? I got up to 195 pounds and I thought I was like in good shape. But then I, I remember one day I looked in the mirror and I was like, wait, I'm fat, like like objectively just fat. And then I was like, all right, I have to cut. I have to cut. This is like too far. Yeah. Yeah, about the, uh, the skin thing. Cause that was um, arguably the most insecure I've ever been, um, was with my skin and having bad acne. And, uh, it was, I remember looking in the mirror multiple times a day at some points, even like multiple times an hour. That's how big of a deal it was for me. And I know that that might be, um, common for a lot of people and looking back, it seems silly to care about something so small that much, but to me, it was that big of a deal. And, uh, anyone who suffered from like pretty bad acne will basically agree with me there that it can be that, uh, consume that much of your life. Um, so I did go to the dermatologist and, uh, I got on, um, well, first of all, I got a routine, which uh, this is kind of, again, going into my glow up, but you could use this for yourself, is just cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen. Um, and so I use the CeraVe salicylic acid cleanser, the CeraVe moisturizer, and um, CeraVe sunscreen again as well, mineral sunscreen. How long have you been doing that routine or has it changed over time? It's changed over time, um, but th this one has been for many years now, like okay. four years at least. And um, I'm also on topical tretinoin, which is prescription grade uh, topical uh, vitamin Retinol. A. Yeah. yeah which is uh, essentially the same derivative of what Accutane, when you actually take it, it is right. uh, vitamin A. Um, and so, but yeah, having that um, also can be twofold when it came to my glow up, which is, uh, contributing obviously to actually clearing up my skin. And it is, uh, well known that like clear, youthful, healthy skin is seen as more attractive, but then also just had such a dramatic increase in my confidence. And that's the way bigger component here. Um, and so basically I would just say that, uh, a huge thing for me was also gaining that confidence through the gym, gaining that confidence through my, uh, like clearing my skin. Um, and then the other things that I did, we can talk about in a little bit. Um, but I don't know if you had that same sort of change in confidence, but I think that, um, <laughs> this is kind of funny. I'm going to my, um, high school reunion in sometime later next month. And I'm uh, really curious to see, uh, all those people. But I think that also I'm a dramatically different human being than I was in high school because I've, I've had this, uh, essentially, uh, profound internal transformation of just uh, the self-confidence that I can walk into a room and carry myself with now was definitely absent in high school. And so uh, I would say that that's the biggest difference in terms of my glow up. And um, th therefore, everything can be kind of traced back to that uh, is, is just how confident I am now. Yeah, I think the way that it works for most people is you work on these external factors you build them up and then you get to a point where it's like, okay, what I've done externally is now undeniable. And that's when it really starts to set in internally. And then you develop this unshakable confidence, hopefully, ideally, right? You develop this unshakable internal confidence through this knowledge that you've been able to transform your body so dramatically and have the discipline to actually follow through and commit to actually improving yourself because that's probably the hardest part about this is like, sure, we can talk about all of the things that you need to do, 
or the things that we did, but really the hardest part is sticking with it and being consistent with it and having the discipline to actually follow through. Yeah. And I want to touch on something else because like skincare and having acne is something everybody goes through, right? Like literally every person, unless you're some genetic anomaly and you Which, have- Which by like, the way, I hate you. If you've had perfectly clear skin <laughs> your entire life, I'm joking. But uh, the people who say like, just use water, man. Oh yeah, like the memes where it's like girls putting- infinite products on their face and then it's like bro washing his face with water and he's just like majestic it's like <laughs> you know or, or like the dove or whatever the commercials where the like they splash the water on their face and then that's like the gist of their like skincare routine it's like splashing the water <laughs> and then they're just like absurdly clear skin with like perfect rejuvenated plump yeah no that's not realistic but yeah i mean i also through the process of eating cottage cheese <laughs> by, by the container it was my skin was just awful and i was very self-conscious too and it's just something everybody goes through and this is kind of something that we'll touch on a little bit later but it's like the diet the diet that's what really reflects in the skin is how healthy your your inside is and your gut that's going to be reflected in your skin and in your face and i feel like nowadays you know even we break out from time to time but our skin is like basically at a state where from week to week, it'll improve. So if we get a breakout, it'll be gone the next week. So it's like now we've reached this kind of state where we're just chilling a bit because we've our diet, our exercise, everything is so on point that now it's just like impervious. Yeah, I think it's something that's actually interesting that you mentioned there is um, how we talked about the unshakable confidence and so on. And now if you or I, or at least I'll speak for myself, but I imagine it's true for you too. If I get a breakout now, like a, you know, a blemish here, it doesn't affect me. I'm not obsessing over yeah. that in the mirror. At one point in my life, I would have, right? So what's the difference between then and now? It is that confidence and it is that internal uh, stability that I have that um, I feel as though, oh, I know that this one blemish doesn't make me any less likable or attractive as a human being. Whereas five years ago, six years ago, it did. I'm like, when I'm having a conversation with people, I'm thinking, are they looking at the, you know, impurities on my face? Yeah, I know. That's a great point. It's like you hyper fixate on the one pimple. Like, oh no, the world is over. Cause that girl I'm talking to, bro, she's looking at the pimple and then I'm, it's game over. Right. When in reality, it's like, there's a lot more to you than just your skin so having one breakout, having two breakouts, even three, whatever, it's, it's not a huge deal if you have a couple pimples on your face. I mean, we record videos now almost on a daily cadence, right? Sometimes we'll chunk it, but we basically record videos on a daily cadence. And if our skin is, oh, we have a couple pimples, we just got to roll with it. We can't just be like, oh, no, the world is over. So I'm sure, I mean, I've uploaded videos where my skin doesn't look fantastic, but it's like, oh, you know, it's just how it is. It's like, whatever. Yeah. It's unshakable. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, some other things that I'm thinking about with my own uh, quote unquote glow up, if you want to call it that, is um, previously when I just didn't care about my looks at all, uh, other things that I sort of uh, have since put more effort into is stuff like uh, my hair or my style, right? Style's a big one. Um, I was the kid who wore essentially like graphic <laughs> t shirts and literally knee past uh, basketball shorts, Adam Sandler fit, right? Atrocious. Um, and so <laughs> once I started- Adam, Bro just roasted Adam Sandler. That's his fit. Have you seen I him know, playing I've, basketball? I've, I've seen it. Yeah, that's yeah. funny. No, but I, I wore those fits. And that's yeah, uh, I am roasting Adam Sandler for that one. Um, but no, so I started focusing more on that. And I definitely went through stages where even now, when I thought my style was good, I look back and I'm like, what am I wearing? And that'll probably happen, honestly, to the style I'm wearing now. But the point is, it's something that I care about now, and it's something that I've uh, worked on. And there definitely are, for example, uh, different styles that look better on different body types, um, certain clothes that are in fashion versus out of fashion. Um, I wouldn't you know, wear super skinny jeans with rips in, um, in 2023 because they're just not in style, right? And that's all a perceptual thing, right? That These are things that are societally deemed. Um, but nevertheless, it can affect your uh, attractiveness, and um, there's no objective to attractiveness. Um, but when you feel good and you look good, uh, th those can kind of be presented outwardly to the world and you'll be perceived as such. Uh, and so that's something that I also focused on. My hair is the other one that I mentioned. Um, 
I get so many comments, um, and this is not trying to brag, but I get a lot of comments talking about like, what's your hair routine? Uh, what's What do you ask the barber? Uh, two comments on that. One is I literally do not use shampoo or conditioner, which I know is weird for a lot of people to hear. Um, and, uh, I watched a video by Johnny Harris. Uh, it's called the no poo movement or like no shampoo movement, but basically, um, it's this whole thing about how the shampoos that are on the market can actually strip the natural oils out of your hair. I was someone who did suffer with like mild dandruff when I was younger. Um, and when I say younger, I mean like literally in high school. And so I stopped washing it every day. Then I stopped washing it every week, whatever. And when I say washing it, I used hot water every single day. Um, but I stopped using the products in it and, um, now I don't use it at all. And that's how my hair looks the way it does. And as far as what I actually ask the barber, um, I haven't gotten a haircut since like December of 2023 or December of 2022. It's now August or September of 2023. So, uh, it's been a long time. Basically I've just grown out my hair. Um, and so, uh, finding a hairstyle that's fixed fits with your face, I think is really important and keeping it healthy. Um, yeah, I could definitely never rock like super long hair like that it wouldn't look good on me so but you know you got to find something that works for you yeah no because that's the thing i had uh, short hair at one point and actually for most of my life and i've got kind of those like ears that poke out a little bit but then also um just my facial features and the way that uh i never had it like over my face but i definitely had it like up and so it actually even elongated my already somewhat long face and when i didn't have facial hair as well it just wasn't the best look um and so i think that finding harmony within your face is important too uh, without again i, I want to make it very clear I at least do not identify as a looks maxer at all. Um, I actually actively try to separate myself from that community. That being said, there are things that you can do to sort of what I would consider, you know, when you look good, you feel good. Yeah. So circling back to the the style point, because so when I was going through these like rapid weight transformations, my body was changing a lot. So finding like a consistent wardrobe was like near impossible. And so during that time, it was very hard for me to actually nail down like a consistent style that actually worked for me and my body type. And I would say the, the biggest thing that changed for me and what I feel allows me to now have this pretty good style is one, getting lean. So I feel like everybody looks better when they're just leaner because the, the clothes just drape off of you. You look taller, it elongates your torso just makes you it overall fits it makes your proportions look better right and so better proportions are the name of the game when it comes to style you don't want to get clothes that that are messing up your proportions like for me i'm not like six two so i can't wear a shirt that's like aggressively long because it'll just make me look lopsided i need to have longer legs as opposed to a longer torso so i need to elongate my legs and not elongate my torso just an example but also once i got to a point where I was like done with the rapid weight transformation and I was just kind of a steady state in terms of my physique. Now I've been able to build a wardrobe and find something that works well for my body type and looks good on me. So that's just my, my, my two cents is like recognize if you're going through a bulk phase that it's not, you're not going to look the best. You're not going to look the best, but it, it'll come later. So just recognize that and be like, okay, I'm sacrificing in the short term, but in the long run, this is going to be okay for me. Yeah. I mean, uh, just commenting on that as someone who, um, has had a somewhat different attitude towards working out, um, that whole reason of basically going to look worse in the short term, which I know that bulking and cutting can be very effective if done right, um, was such a drawback to me that I actually have never done like a proper bulk or a proper cut. And so what I've done instead is just main gained, if you want to call it that, but slowly added weight over time, literally over the course of years. And so I've had a six pack basically since, uh, I first got it in 2017. Yeah. For me, it's a little bit different because I have such a crazy metabolism I think I probably even eat more food than you do. You very well might. So it's like, for me, I needed that shock to my system to actually build the weight. Otherwise, it wasn't going to happen, right? It was like, I needed to literally just overload my body and just be like, Ben, this is what's going on. You're just going to shove calories back. And then that's, that's just how it's going to be. But now I'm at a point where it's like, maintaining is super easy for me. But gaining, gaining and just like incrementally gaining is impossible for me because hitting that mark where it's like, oh, like two, 300 calories above my maintenance, almost impossible. Because when I do that, what I ended up just doing is 
I, my body end up compensating for that increased caloric intake and then I'm just maintaining again. So it's like impossible for me to gain weight. It's just my body and my physiology, but yeah, you got to experiment with it. No, that makes sense. Um, so then I guess as we sort of conclude our anecdotal stories, uh, just talk about the, uh, ways that our life has sort of changed. Um, I alluded to, and I could go more into depth on this, but just the drastic increase in confidence, um, which by the way, has transferred it into virtually every aspect of my life, uh, of course, romantically, um, but also even in stuff like school or careers or my career and stuff like that is just the fact that I am now this much more confident human being than I was previously. I am able to walk into new ventures and be like, you know what? I know that I can succeed in this because of what I did with the gym, um, because of what I did with everything else. And so the, the newfound confidence has dramatically improved my life. And it's weird to think that basically your physical appearance has some part of that, but I do think that it does not directly. And I think a lot of people mistakenly think that it'll have a direct input, which we'll talk more about in part two, but there is that sort of transitive property of once you start getting that external stimuli, you can start building that internal confidence over the course of years, you become that unshakable confidence. And then and that unshakable confidence is an invaluable tool to improve your life. And so I don't know if you ha want to talk about basically the, how your life has changed. Yeah. I, I would say that physical and mental health, they're closely interrelated. So obviously you can see the guy, some guy who might have a crazy physique, right? You look at all these like bodybuilding memes on TikTok or whatever, and these dudes are like, I look insane, but I'm like depressed. It's like, it, but it does interrelate, right? There's a strong relationship between your physical and mental health. So I would say it's very hard to have one without the other, but it can happen. So, but overall, I would just say for me, building that strong physical health has dramatically improved my self-confidence again and i feel like like going into new ventures or just going about my daily life the the amount of confidence i have in myself is, is tremendous and so kind of an example i'm not saying i wanted this to happen but when all the layoffs were happening at meta i was like you know if it does happen and i am laid off everything's going to be okay because i have that inner confidence in myself to just make things happen so yeah, that's what I would say is like doing all of this has just been a dramatic improvement in my ability to believe in myself and make things happen. Great. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have any final words, we can start wrapping up this episode. Yeah, that's it. All right. So uh, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you are listening on any podcast platform, make sure to give us five stars and be on the lookout for next week, which is part two, where we actually go more in depth into the individual categories on how you can specifically contribute to your own glow up. Um, it's going to be a lot of the stuff that we talked about today, uh, but more uh, actionable in your own life. Um, and as always, thanks so much for watching.